So, today I've got some fresh Sonic news. We've got a bunch of details on Sonic Colors Ultimate, some which will make everyone go yay, and some more news that will unfortunately make people go aww. Also, I got a ton of details about the new additions they will be adding to the game. There's a lot of details in this leak that everyone is yet to even notice yet, so there's a lot to go into. Wow. So before we get into all this spicy Sonic colors and other Sonic news, go drop a like so more people can see this epic news and will mentally wake up and join the Raccoon Nation. So drop a subscribe and a wingy bingy bell because you're not going to want to miss out on all the Sonic news we've got in the coming months. And this is easily the number one source for all Sonic news, so you might as well. Now to understand all the new details we got, let's briefly cover what we know up to now. So Sonic Colors Ultimate will be releasing on September 7th, 2021. It will feature graphical and gameplay improvements. But what exactly the level of improvement is worries a lot of fans. But I have some good news to relieve a lot of you. But I have to say, it's definitely not perfect. So we do not know every single additional feature that will be added. But with all this news, we actually have a pretty good idea of most of it. There's one new feature in particular that everyone is hyped for. And I honestly just don't understand why. Huh? So at the Sonic Central event, they showed you're going to be able to customize and change out your shoe and glove texture. Which, thank God, this is something I've been hearing Sonic fans for a year say. Now, you might be thinking, Jaden, how could making your gloves and shoes silver affect the gameplay? And to that, I say the implications are obvious. Not only will you be shiny and chrome, which we know the future is made out of, but all the enemies won't be able to lay a finger on you when you got your drip on. Which, off topic, they're releasing real Sonic drip soon. Ah! But in all seriousness, I don't see any appeal to these wearables, and I'm somewhat confused about what is exciting people. Like, okay, my shoes have Dalmatian print on them, cool. Especially compared to all the other info we got, this seems like literally nothing to me. But I'm not going to be that guy. While I don't understand the excitement as this is going to have no effect on gameplay, hey, excitement is good, right? I'm going to let you guys have your fun on this one. Now, let's get into what is legitimately dividing the fans. Let's look at how the graphics have improved. So let's look at the first clip of gameplay that came out a few days ago. Nice, nice. Everything looks good, and you might even be impressed. But now let's compare them to the original. I mean, almost all the elements here were in the original. Plus, this water filter doesn't interact or go over all the textures. So at its current place, it looks good, but not like over a decade better. Like the biggest thing I'm hearing everyone say is why did they make it so dark? And knowing the answer, I understand both sides. I know it's not as simple as dark or light. It's not like a button you press. They have to set up all these individual lighting points. And while they can mostly clone them after, it's definitely still a lot of work. And making a game in general is a lot of work. Which is why I think the fan base came around on Sonic 06 as they got older. We all know it was chaos. And I think Sonic fans are even more sympathetic to that after seeing the struggle that basically every fan game goes through. Say what you want about Sonic Omens. But the persistence of finishing each chapter to completion, when most fan games never leave the gray block test stage, is really impressive. While it does have noticeable flaws, it's reasonably positive. But I'm getting off topic. The ADHD is kicking in hard. I see the argument of, mm, but the original only looks good using emulator, not original hardware. But that's obvious. I mean, obviously people aren't going to be using the console from 2006 to play games in 2021. Emulating is by far the most popular and accessible way to play these games. And I've even seen these same creators using emulators. So the community better not switch to some like anti-emulation stance now. Especially since the Wii didn't even have HDMI and most TVs no longer have RCA. I bet you didn't even know it was called that and you call it the yellow, white, and red cable, don't you? If an automated process that an emulator can add platform-wide using the original game with no modification and it can look almost as good as Ultimate, 
then I think it's obvious a lot of people are going to question Ultimate's value. Which is probably the reason they're trying to shove as many things in this as possible. As I'll cover later when we get into the details of what exactly is included in the Deluxe or DX edition. I know basically everyone has done comparison videos, but I want to look at one and analyze it. Alright, let's spin the wheel. I'm going to go with Sam Procrastinate's video as there's no analysis or commentary over it. And it's also a pretty well edited video. Nice job, Sam. Good job. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. So here's an analysis of some of the most interesting parts. Now, for the first clip comparison, I'm going to look at the most referenced one. So this space shot is tricky because while the ultimate one is more clear and sharp, it almost lacks all the style and color from before. The lighting on the floor is bright, but a lot of the colors and ambience has been tampered. There's a lot more stars, which reminds me of Sonic Adventure 2. There wasn't like any star restriction or whatever with the graphics. So before it was just an aesthetics choice. Why did they undo that? In this scene, there are no visible new elements such as scenery to fill out the background since they literally have no limitations. Now let's look at this rainbow road thing. So while resolution wise, Ultimate is obviously superior, but it just looks weirdly bright now. The blue and purple glows have been replaced by a strong white one. Again, looking at the background, no new graphical elements are shown. There's one on the Eggman teacup sky part. Guys, I have played the game. And this looks better on Ultimate, but it's very subtle. At first glance, it looks like they just brightened up the sky a bit. I think the filter effect makes the orange look a lot less cartoony, but it's definitely subtle. However, another shot from that sky part looks a lot more promising. I think this was an error in the original, but this one metal pillar has this random pinkish glow on it that they fixed and combined with this new light ray looks much better. But unfortunately, this is the only only one I was blatantly disappointed in. Aww. This green ooze I think looks way worse. Before it was this dark eerie cave, but now everything is so contrasted and bloomy. Literally everything glows. Even those yellow pillars are glowing. It's a bit over the top to compensate the lack of changes, but it makes the level end up looking like a fan game. Now, on a more positive note, here's where the remaster looks way better. The welcome sign now has a lot more lighting. A lot of the background cutouts that were too dark to see earlier pop out a lot more. Plus, I think the way the lighting hits the bottom part of the level, mm, it just looks so nice. And another one from I think the same level. This looks so much better the remastered version. My theory is that this level is just much more polished than the rest, and in the coming months, we'll see them all look this good. Another change they made that I actually like is the subtle blue distance fog that gives it a much more underwater look and feel while brightening up the whole tunnel. And this was previously pretty hard to see, so good job. And there's the shot of Sonic digging through what I assume is a cake by the strawberries and kiwis? Give me that cake. I don't know. I'm excited to see what the context of this is, though. But graphically, I can't see any improvements. If anything, I would say it looks significantly worse with the red hue that everything underground has. One thing I noticed from the Earth that I'm seeing a bit around the whole remaster is that green glow that was everywhere in the original, which I personally think looks cheap is gone. I understand it's part of the art style, but I don't mind seeing it go for a much more white balance game where the whites are whites and not green. And unfortunately, this is where it gets bad. Aww. Now this rail loop we see is odd because the texture and details from the original here are straight up missing. And this is an example of way over lighting it. It looks weird and is missing the glow and ambience of the original. If the names weren't in the corner and there wasn't a higher FPS and resolution, I would think the original is the remastered. Then there's this actual Rainbow Road dance floor thing, and it's about as good as the original. Again, it's more white balanced and clear, less color direction and glow, but still, it looks pretty good. However, we go back to this dessert world, the lighting in Ultimate actually looks so much better. The original looks kind of flat and gross. Yeah. 
While the new one uses the lighting to layer the background better and makes it more smooth and feel like it actually belongs. Now, here's an example where I think most people would agree Ultimate doesn't look as good as colors. This water level is now dark and lacking any detail. Looking very dull and gray, missing the transparency at the top of the water, and the vivid background of the original. On this part of the level, the only thing they added was a bunch of bloom to give literally everything glow and change the box platforms. And for the last comparison, if you look at these side by side, it doesn't really look much different. It's brighter and glowier. The fish from the background were in the original and they didn't really add anything at all. The water texture was subtly there before and is now completely unmissable. This still looks good, but currently it looks more like a good port than a remaster. I think they are putting in the effort to remake all these textures, but they aren't changing the design of much or enhancing the atmosphere with more buildings and such. It basically looks the same with some enhancements and some downgrades that we will hopefully see fixed by the time of release. So I think this build is clearly much improved from that Sonic Central trailer, but there's definitely some areas that a lot of people thought looked better in before, particularly that water level. Flash. And like the space outside one, like I said, I've never played colors before. Cut me a break, guys. Keep in mind, there will likely be more graphical improvements in the final release as we're still a few months out from it. It's still no PS5 Demon Souls, despite the years being similar. And the PS3 was still way more powerful than the Wii, so they should look even closer. And while this is no doubt better than the Wii, don't get me wrong, this game's gonna come out long after Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which honestly looks incredible but i'm still excited for the release so let's talk about the new additions they will be adding to sonic colors i know some people are expecting sonic team to go above and beyond and add new levels and characters but i would tell those people to lower their expectations this isn't master chief collection while both of these things would be reasonable to do this is sonic team we're talking about and like every other sonic tuber has said they need to earn their goodwill and I've got some Sonic news on that, and I'm gonna be real with you. It's bad. It was recently confirmed in a Japanese interview with magazine Famitsu, Famitsu, that Tails will not be playable. There is a Tails coin that everyone's talking about, but that apparently just allows Tails to be able to pick you up, but you can't like be Tails. He will save you if you fall in a pit and you have to get these coins or else you'll just fall, and Tails will laugh in joy as Sonic falls to his demise. Hopefully you're still fairly in control, because I can imagine speedrunners are foaming at the mouth thinking of all the possibilities with them being able to interact with different parts of the map that were previously unintended. And obviously, a lot of people are disappointed about this news, not only because they can't play as Tails, but because many already consider Colors one of the easiest Sonic games, and they're really just making it easier. I'm hoping they add some, like, hard or hardcore mode to make the game more challenging for players who grew up with it and are older now, because otherwise, I think men are you're going to be very disappointed in this and are just going to call it boring for its lack of challenge. Somehow they found a way to forces this game. How did they do it? Now for the level discussion. So hopefully we'll see a few new planets added or something, but at this current moment, it looks like the levels will be all the same with some new modes being added. I think they are wanting a lot of replayability with the addition of unlockable wearables, so this could change, but for now it looks like we will just be seeing the original level selection. So to conclude all that, that, I want to say, Sonic Colors Ultimate does look better than the original. I think the Bloomin' stuff, I don't know, I'm not a game dev, does look a bit over the top, but we'll just have to see how it looks. There's gameplay of the original where a guy had some process to upscale all the textures using AI, and the only thing he did manually was just adjust Sonic in one of the boxes. It looks incredible, and it's the gameplay I'm using here. Bruh. With something so good looking being automated, it shows a new technology being used in a way by the community that is pretty comparable to the official product. Especially since almost all of these features will probably be modded in pretty quickly after release. Where it gets interesting is that these mods actually will be competing with Sega's release, so they might take action. 
But who knows, they've shown they will be lenient as long as they're not profiting. But if it is interfering with sales, it'd be interesting to see whether they would pull the plug or not. And lastly, we are doing a Sonic Movie Watch Party on Friday, June 11th over on Sonic Show Live over at Twitch. Link in description. Go follow and hit notifications there so you don't miss out on the epic stream. I'll post the final decided time in my Discord server after I crunch all the numbers and finally figure out what the inside of a black hole looks like. Anyways, like and subscribe if you're not an idiot. And even if you are an idiot, still like and subscribe. I promise I'm not going to make you take an IQ test. Whoa, and I'm getting breaking news. If you don't have bell notifications on, you live a sad and pathetic life, but you can break free with a simple and free choice. Lots of love. Peace.